Hello students, a warm welcome to all of you. In this module, we are going to discuss 13th chapter in our CBSC curriculum of grade 9 that is surface areas and volumes. Surface areas and volumes. So, in this topic, what are we going to learn about? Surface area and volume. See, there are two things that we are going to learn now. Surface area, what do you mean by that? And volume, what do you mean by that? And before entering into the topic called surface areas and volumes, we should know about plane figures which are 0 dimensional figures, 2 dimensional figures, 1 dimensional figure, 3 dimensional figures. What do you mean by 0 dimensional figure? Means there is no dimension at all. So, what kind of plane figures are called 0 dimensional figures? 0 dimensional figures are nothing but there is no dimension at all. So, simply if you consider a point, this point has no length, no breadth, no thickness. Of course, it may be having a thickness otherwise we cannot see that, but it is almost negligible. So, that is why a point is named as 0 dimensional plane figure. So, it has no dimension, so 0 dimensions right and 1 dimension, 1 dimension means there may be only a length, only a length means let us consider a line segment, a line segment A B is having certain length. So, this line segment is called a 1 dimensional figure right it is called one dimensional figure and what are two dimensional figures of course you have so many two dimensional figures like polygons a circle so circle has two dimensions in the sense generally we consider its radius as well as the circumference with the help of the radius we can find the circumference and all let us consider a triangle we have length as well as breadth length as well as breadth means it has a base as well as the perpendicular distance coming to a rectangle a rectangle has length as well as breadth so we can consider them as three dimensional figures sorry two dimensional figures and what are three dimensional figures so three dimensional figures are nothing but whatever the figures that you can hold that you can hold that you can hold in the sense if there is a thickness of the figure, then only we can hold them, otherwise we cannot hold those figures. So, those kind of figures are said to be three dimensional figures. So, every three dimensional figure has a certain length as well as breadth, otherwise we can call it as width and height otherwise thickness height or thickness. So, these kind of figures, a figure which has all these three dimensions are said to be three dimensional figures. So, if you want to hold a figure, it has to have a certain thickness that is what called height sorry that is what called height of the figure. So, a figure which has thickness that we can hold is said to be a three dimensional figure. So, you can uh, see three dimensional figures around you so many like this is a stylus, this stylus has a thickness that is why I can hold this. So, that is why this stylus is a three dimensional figure and for example, the board that you can see is also a three dimensional figure. So, like that a figure which has a thickness is said to be a, UD, uh, a three dimensional figure. Now, we are going to discuss about three dimensional figures in the concept called areas and uh, volumes. So, before that I just want to give you a clarity between 
what do you mean by area as well as volume? See these two looks like same area and volume. So, what do you mean by area and what do you mean by the volume and what is the difference between both of them? See here area of a plane figure and volume of a plane figure. For example, if I am placing if I am placing one object on one surface, I am placing one object on one surface, then that object occupies some space on the surface. Suppose, if I place this on for example, the table, if I place this on the table, then the base of this figure occupies some space on the table. So, whatever the space it is occupied on the surface is said to be its area, hope you understand. So, area of a plane figure means the space occupied by the plane figure on the surface, on the surface is said to be area. And then what do you mean by volume? Volume is nothing but the space occupied, the space occupied by a plane figure a space occupied by a plane figure or you can call it as simply a three dimensional figure the space or you can simply call it as the region occupied the region occupied by a figure in the space in the space means what not only on the floor not only on the floor in the space then that region occupied by a solid region occupied by a solid in the space is said to be the volume. And what do you mean by area? Area is nothing but the space otherwise the region you can call it as the region also the region occupied by any plane figure on the surface on only the surface of one object is said to be its area. So, the region occupied by any solid in the space I am talking about in the space. So, is said to be volume of the solid object. So, that is what is the difference between area as well as volume. Now, if you consider two types of solids, what are those two types of solids? One is one kind of solid is like prism and second kind of solids are pyramid prism and a pyramid. So, we are going to discuss about these two types of solids. So, what do you mean by a prism and what do you mean by a pyramid? See coming to this prism here, when a solid object is said to be a prism. So, I am taking my cell phone, see here I can call this as a prism. So, why can I call it as a prism? So, every solid object every solid object has certain thickness, but when that solid object is said to be a prism, when that solid object is said to be a prism. So, a prism is a solid object whose both the bases, these two bases are, these two faces can be considered as the bases. So, these two faces are two parallel and congruent parallelograms. So, this one and this one both are two parallel and congruent parallelograms. Hope you understand these two are two parallel and congruent parallelograms and the other faces 1, 2, 3, 4 see 1, 2, 3, 4 these four are lateral surfaces these four are lateral surfaces then that kind of solid is said to be a prism. So, whose both the bases are parallel and congruent faces. These two are both parallel and congruent faces and the other lateral surfaces are parallelograms. This is a parallelogram, this is a parallelogram, this is a parallelogram, this is a parallelogram. So, then that kind of solid object is said to be a prism. You understand? So, what are different types of prisms? So, we have rectangular prism. What do you mean by rectangular prism? Rectangular prism means the base is a rectangle. See, this is a base. So, if the shape of the base is a rectangle, then the prism is said to be rectangular prism. 
If the shape of the base is a triangle, then it is said to be a triangular prism. And what is the other name of rectangular prism? Yes, it is said to be a cuboid. And if the base is in the shape of a square, then if the base is in the shape of a square, then that is square shaped prism, otherwise simply you can call it as a cube. right? So, this is about a prism. So, prism means both the bases are parallel and congruent faces and all the other lateral surfaces are parallelograms, then that solid object is said to be a prism. And what do you mean by a pyramid? Pyramid in the sense the base can be any one of the polygon and its opposite is a vertex, then that kind of solid is said to be a pyramid. But in our grade 9 and in our CBSC curriculum, we discuss about only prisms, right? And what kind of prisms we discuss and what kind of solids we discuss in this concept called surface areas, we are going to discuss about few set of solids in our grade 9 CBSC curriculum. So, those solids are the very first solid is going to be any guesses about the solids here that we are going to discuss now? Yes, the very first solid is a cuboid, cuboid and the second solid is going to be a cube and the third solid is going to be a cylinder and fourth solid is going to be a cone and the fifth solid is going to be a sphere. Of course, the next one is going to be a hemisphere, a hemisphere. So, what are all these solids and their surface areas as well as volumes? Let us have a discussion about this cuboid, cube, cylinder, cone as well as sphere and hemisphere also. First, let us try to understand what do you mean by a cuboid? Have you ever seen a cuboid and what do you mean by a cuboid? We are discussing about first solid that is cuboid. Okay. See, let us consider a solid object. So, this is one solid object and as per our discussion already happened, a cuboid is a prism whose base is a rectangle. So, this is the base is a rectangle and uh, I am taking this is one more rectangle. Okay. See how easy to draw these two solid uh, like a cuboid join here, I am joining here and join here as well as join here also. See you obtain one cuboid. See in this cuboid particularly, I am just shading this this is what you call one face. Okay? One face is nothing but it is the base, this is one base of our cuboid. See in this cuboid and in this base especially, if this is the base and it is opposite back side also can be considered as the face because both of them are bases. If this is the base and it is in the shape of a rectangle, then you can call it is a cuboid. And what are the dimensions here? The dimensions are let us consider this entire thing is equal to the length. Okay? So, the entire thing is going to be the length and this entire thing can be considered as the breadth. And what about the height of this? The height or thickness of this is the height. So, let it be h of the cuboid. Now, when a solid object is said to be cuboid, you just think logically that here if you want to call a solid object as a cuboid, it is not necessary that length is not equal to breadth is not equal to height. So, either length is not equal to breadth, otherwise breadth is not equal to height, otherwise length is not equal to height. Otherwise, all the three are not equal, length is not equal to breadth is not equal to height. So, then that solid object is said to be a cuboid. So, if any two dimensions are unequal, then we can call that solid object with the rectangular base 
and uh, it should be a prism is said to be a cuboid right. Let us now try to understand what is this cuboid is all about. Okay. So, again I am taking my mobile to explain you what is meant by cuboid because this is one of the best example for a cuboid right. So, let us have what are all the dimensions that it has. See for example, this cuboid has how many number of faces see this is one face its opposite back side is also one face. So, two faces this is third face and its opposite is fourth face and this is fifth one and this is one more face. So, totally how many number of faces are there? There are totally six faces for a cuboid. So, I am writing here number of faces number of faces is equal to indicated by f which is equal to 6 fine and then I just want to know how many number of edges are there right how many number of edges see let us have a look on this it has how many number of edges now this is one face and this is the another face where both the faces meet that is what called edge. So, like that it has how many number of edges ok see I am just observing here this is one edge and then 2 and then 3 and then 4 and then 5 and then 6 and coming here 7 and then 8 and then 9 and then 10 and then 11 and then 12. So, how many number of edges are there? There are totally 12 edges number of edges is equal to 12 and coming to the number of vertices. So, again vertex, vertex is nothing but where two edges meet see these two edges these two edges are meeting at this particular point. So, this is one one vertex. So, this is one more vertex. So, two vertices two vertices four vertices two vertices six vertices and then two vertices there are totally eight vertices. So, the number of vertices is equal to eight number of vertices v is equal to eight. I think there is a relationship between number of faces number of edges number of vertices of either a prism or a pyramid. There is one very very important relationship given by Euclid sorry Euler. So, what was that relation between number of faces number of edges number of vertices of any prism or any pyramid which is equal to f plus v is equal to e plus 2 f plus v is equal to e plus 2 means number of faces plus number of vertices number of faces equal to 6 number of vertices is equal to 8 what is 6 plus 8 which is 14 is equal to number of edges plus 2 number of edges equal to 12 plus 2 equal to 14. So, 14 is equal to 14. So, this is what is called Euler's formula given by the famous mathematician Euler he identified the relationship between the number of faces number of vertices number of edges of any prism or any pyramid. So, what do you call this formula? It is called Euler's formula. What do you call this? Euler's formula. So, Euler's formula gives the relationship between number of faces, number of vertices, number of edges of any prism or any pyramid. Please do remember this. This is one of the most interesting and important concept of course. Right. So, now this is what is our identification and after that this is the topic is all about surface area and volume right. So, now what are all the areas of this and then what about the volume of this let us try to understand first of all this figure this cuboid has how many number of faces it has totally 6 number of faces and here if you consider in general each face is a rectangle let us consider by default this is what is our condition. L is not equal to breadth is not equal to height by default. Okay. Suppose if two of them are equal it is ok does not matter. Okay. Accordingly we can frame the formula. So, when L is not equal to breadth is not equal to height then every single face out of the six faces should be a rectangle. So, if you find the base area of this cuboid. So, this is what is the base. Okay. What is the area of base of this rectangle whose length is equal to L and breadth is equal to B. Therefore, the base area of cuboid. So, base area of cuboid is going to be length multiplied by breadth. 
so L into B is the area of the base of cuboid or rectangular prism. Okay, this is the base area. And what about how many number of bases are there? This is one base. Exactly, its opposite, its parallel side should also be considered as the base. So the area of this base is going to be L into B. Then the other base should also be L into B only. And what about the lateral surfaces? Now coming to lateral surfaces. This is one lateral surface. 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 So totally four lateral surfaces are there. Let us try to understand what is the area of this lateral surface. First of all, if you observe this, this face is also a rectangle. Coming to the area of this rectangle, this is already L and this is thickness that is H. So, L into H is area of this face. So, its opposite is also L into H only, right. So, there are two L into H, okay, fine. What about this? So, this can be considered as the breadth, and again, this is H only, no. So, breadth into H is equal to BH. So, BH plus BH is equal to 2 BH. LH plus LH is equal to 2 LH. So, that lateral surface area of cuboid is equal to 2 LH plus 2 BH, right. So, if you observe, you can take one 2 common as well as H also can be taken common, right. So, 2 H times here L and here B. So, this 2 H into L plus B is the formula for lateral surface area of cuboid lateral surface area of cuboid. What do you mean by this lateral surface area and in our daily life where do we see this lateral surface area? For example, you are living in your room, right. So, if you want to paint your room without roof as well as the floor, then you can see four walls around you, right. So, if you want to paint four walls around you, then it means that you are going to find out how much area that you are going to paint. How much area is nothing but that is the lateral surface area of your room. So, lateral surface area is nothing but area of four walls of a room. So, area of four walls of a room is going to be 2 H times L plus B. So, if you find out what is 2 H times L plus B, then that is what the area that are going to paint. Did you get my point? So, area of four walls of a room is nothing but lateral surface area of cuboid. Got it? And coming to total surface area or simply surface area of cuboid. So, what do you mean by surface area? When you paint, otherwise when you find out the surface areas, when you find out the areas of all these faces together, then it is said to be total surface area, otherwise simply surface area of cuboid. Already we know that out of six faces, there are two bases remaining four are lateral surfaces, right. So, the base area is equal to L into B, but there are two bases. So, that two base area plus next one is lateral surface area. So, lateral surface area, got it. So, two base area means that is two into base area is going to be L into B plus lateral surface area is equal to 2 H times L plus B. So, totally you can take one 2 common, then this is 2 times L B plus B H plus L H is the formula for total surface area otherwise surface area of cuboid, right. So, this way we can find the total surface area or surface area of cuboid and after that volume. What do you mean by volume, we already discussed about the volume, the space occupied, otherwise the region occupied by any solid in space is said to be the volume. See, coming to the volume of this object, see in order to find the volume of the object, it is very much easier that this is the shape of the base is a rectangle and of course, it is maintaining uniform thickness, the thickness remains same all over this figure, the thickness remains same. Suppose, if you cut this into h number of rectangles, because the height is going to be h. If you consider h number of rectangles, then L h uh, sorry L b 
plus L B plus L B plus L B like that. How many number of rectangles that you are consider uh, that that you are cutting this into H number of rectangles? Then L B plus L B plus L B and so on L B till H times. Then it is going to be L B times H, which is equal to L B H. So to understand that in a better way that if any solid is having uniform thickness any solid is having uniform thickness then volume of that particular solid can be considered and can be studied as base area multiplied by height base area multiplied by height will give you base area multiplied by height will give you the volume of solid object so that the volume of solid object is going to be base area multiplied by height base area multiplied by height its base area is equal to l into b multiplied by height is equal to h so l b times h is said to be volume of our cuboid hope you understand so that is about volume of the cuboid and i just want to tell you one very important thing here suppose if you want to place the maximum length of the rod if you want to place the maximum length of the rod in your room then how can you place that so if you want to place that definitely you will see where is the maximum length that you can identify in the room so the maximum length suppose if you want to leave it on the floor then definitely you will have to put it diagonally but my question here is what is the maximum length of the rod that can be placed in your room in your room in the sense it is not only on the floor you can use the entire room so then definitely you will think that what is the maximum length that i can identify here so definitely you will get one idea that the top corner of the floor the top corner of the floor and exactly its opposite bottom corner exactly its opposite bottom corner of the room it means that is what you can call it as the diagonal of your room right so if you identify the diagonal of your room then that is only the maximum length of the maximum length of the rod that can be placed in four walls of a room so what is the maximum length of the rod that can be placed in four walls of a room that is nothing but the diagonal of cuboid so what is the diagonal of cuboid if you can observe diagonal of cuboid can be obtained easily so that is what i am going to explain you now so what is that diagonal of cuboid okay we are going to discuss now what is diagonal diagonal of cuboid so diagonal of cuboid is going to be see for example this is a cuboid okay this is one cuboid see here i am going to find identify the vertices the corners one corner on the top and one corner on the bottom see this is one corner on the bottom this is what is the length of the diagonal length of the diagonal of the cuboid how to find out the length of the diagonal of a cuboid so in order to find the length of the diagonal of a cuboid i will just give you one clear cut idea when you are there in your classroom okay so in your classroom in your classroom the way the place where the diagonal is so the diagonal is nothing but the top corner to its bottom corner okay so top corner to bottom corner you will have to identify one imaginary line just feel that there is an imaginary line that is what called as the diagonal of a cuboid see when you see the top corner as well as its opposite bottom corner that is what the diagonal of a cuboid but how to identify that length it is very much easier that the height of the room is there the height of the room and the floor is there so the floor base means where the height ends otherwise where the height starts doesn't matter where the height starts from there to its opposite diagonal so that is nothing but the diagonal of the floor so the diagonal of the floor can be considered as one of the perpendicular sides and the height is the another perpendicular side and the diagonal of the room is the hypotenuse hope you understand so i am taking this is what height of your room 
and this is what is the diagonal of your floor. So, the diagonal of the floor diagonal of the floor right. So, this is what is the maximum length of the this is what called a diagonal of room this is the diagonal of the room ok. See this is h so height being same but what about the diagonal of the floor the diagonal of the floor is nothing but floor is in the shape of a rectangle of course it is the base then whose length as well as breadth are are the perpendicular sides so that the diagonal of the floor is going to be root over l square plus b square right so with the help of this you can easily obtain what is the diagonal of the room by using pythagoras theorem so the diagonal of the room is equal to suppose i am taking it as d diagonal square is equal to means hypotenuse square equal to side square plus side square see here hypotenuse is h square and here another side is root over l square plus b square square right so whole square so d square is going to be h square plus square root gets cancelled remaining l square plus b square so finally you get l square plus b square plus h square Therefore, the diagonal is going to be square root L square plus B square plus H square. So, this is what you called diagonal of rectangle otherwise sorry not diagonal of rectangle diagonal of a cuboid and you can call it as the maximum length of the rod that can be placed in four walls of a room. So, please do remember this formula because this is one of the most important formula in our day to day life of course, in competitive examinations like IMO and the uh, South Indian Mass Olympiad kind of examinations. You will be asked many number of questions on the concept called diagonal of cube as well as cuboid. So, hope you understand and enjoy the class. So, this is about cuboid. Thank you.